Welcome to this week's The Choice. And this week, well... It's a whole new season. Yeah. It's a whole new season of choice. And this week, we're going to head to Alaska. 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 Wade Renfro, one of the best outfitters up there, Renfro's huh? Renfro's Alaskan Adventures. I mean, we've gone up there, what, five or six times? Yep. And come back with brown bears and moose and all kinds of great stuff. And this... This episode's actually a two-parter. It's two parts. This week's lucky logo is a Maristep. A Maristep, the ultimate in ground blinds. So watch for the Maristep logo, and at the end of the show, we'll tell you what to do with that. Should we get going? Let's just... Want to start rafting? Start floating for brown bears. A lot of you who haven't done a lot of these wilderness hunts, one of the big things is we are gonna be flying on a Super Cub with Tundra tires. You have to downsize everything you're bringing. And because we're on a float trip for brown bear, we really have to downsize and waterproof everything. So here's all our gear. We have our, our street clothes on and everything else. And so we're gonna pack all that. We're gonna leave it here at the hangar. If you look out there, you could see that visibility is bad and we have to have patience because a lot of times you cannot fly out. It's safety, man, it's just safety. So you, we, got, we got a bunch of time. Who knows if it lifts, we'll be able to get out today. If not, don't get depressed or go back to the hotel and say, you know what, we'll get out tomorrow. One of the things that we did, obviously, is we did cram it pretty tight inside this in, inside of our plano all-weather hard case. But we also did it with our soft case because on the float trip, you wanted to make sure that your weapons, your choice, whatever it is, it's protected as well. So we've got a nice soft padded case here for our PC. We came up with the intentions of two Hoyts and a Thompson Center. So we'll see what happens. Oh, this is a Mall M7. This is a great little bush plane. We're gonna load up your gear and make a trip out to the gravel bar, a little strip we made for you out in the middle of nowhere. So we'll start getting gear out here. I think what we'll do is we'll take just one of you and as much gear as we can, and then I'll come back and you'll take this plane or the Super Cub on the next trip. Okay. The guys know how to load these planes, and that's a very critical thing. Sometimes if you're not with experienced pilots, you don't take a chance. That's the bottom line, you don't take a chance. These boys do this every day of their lives. When we lose our ceiling, we're out of here. All right, bye. I'll see you in a couple hours. See ya. Love you. Guys are getting the boats ready. I should say rafts. We got the tents, we got everything. Boy, this is what you always dreamed of, to be on a river in the middle of Alaska, and you're gonna float down, find a slough, camp for the night, maybe a couple nights if the slough's active with bears and, and fish. The fish are there, the bears will be there. And I could still hear a plane out in the distance. I'm not sure if it's Vicky. But Jeff and Zach are getting everything ready. They just got all the oar locks on the rafts, and. It's a matter of getting it packed the right way and we start heading down river. Again, we're up here with Wade Renfro, Renfro's Alaskan Adventures. We've been here a lot and the reason being is because Wade runs one heck of a camp. This is it, our big Alaskan adventure. We're pumped. We're with Zach and Jeff and we're floating down the river and I only got my Hoyt. You know, we as hunters live by our choices. And my choice, you know, for the past few years is, is to, I really want to try to get a brown bear with my bow. And that's what this week is all about. We're here in Alaska with Wade Renfro, Renfro's Alaskan Adventures this week and you don't want to miss it because guys, we're hunting brown bear. Floating for brown bear. Once again, we're up here in Alaska with Renfro's Alaskan Adventures, and we're up here trying to fulfill Ralph's dream. He has dreamt 
I don't know, since he started bow hunting, that he wanted to shoot a brown bear with his bow. God, I love the river. Yeah, the river's just up higher than I thought. They want the fish to stay in those sloughs that the bears fish for them in. If the water gets too high, it'll start washing the fish out of the sloughs, make the hunting a little tougher. Is that, he knows of this big slough back here. He's actually gonna just go walk and see if he can cut any fresh sign. They shot a monster out of here a year ago. And what he said is a lot of times when big boar's out, another big boar moves in. All right, so that's the size track we're looking for. It's an adult boar, he's probably nine, nine and a half. He's got an eight inch pad he's, and he's been here. This is where we'll start the hunt. I've put the TC down two years ago and uh, I've been determined to get my brown bear with my bow. You know, I've got my Hoyt. I'm shooting a Beeman 400 Patriot with an NAP Hellraiser. Vicky's got her Hoyt, but we, we also have the TC. 300 win mag. We came down, we set up camp. We, we got everything settled in. Well, here's to a great hunt, guys. I just stepped out and I, I heard a beaver, flapjack, right here across to this inlet. And this is a marsh that we hunt. It just made me look in that direction as I'm looking. Good brown bear just came out of that slough where we're going tomorrow. It was awesome. Our first night out and we see a bear like that. You never know what to expect here in Alaska. You know, every time we come up here with Wade, th there's no doubt in our mind that we're gonna have a great adventure, really. And we're gonna see a lot of game. We just saw, we saw a sow and two cubs, a blonde, blonde cub. It was beautiful, Looks like it looked like two-year-old cubs. Um, and they went into our inlet, into our slough. Now, last night we had that boar come out. He came out before dark and he fed up river. We got the wind, we got everything in our favor. Vicky, Jeff, Zach, and I are gonna paddle across, get in that slough we're gonna, where more of the reds are sitting. All right, so y'all, all you remember is that there's a sow and two cubs right in here somewhere. Yes, sir. That's why you're going first. I'm holding off with my bow. Vicky wants to shoot a brown bear with her bow too, but if a big bear comes out and he doesn't come out far enough, I'm gonna have to hold her down because she's gonna let her TC smoke a big bear like that because she's still trying to get a bear bigger than mine. Let's face it, she hasn't. We, at times we're walking down bear trails in thick cover, and you don't know if they're 10 feet in front of you, you don't know if they're 10 feet in back of you. The Alaskan brown bear, it's an animal that 100%, it's all about the wind. Their sense of smell is, uh, there's nothing really that compares to it that I know in the, in the hunting world. The wind has to be right. And if the wind's not right, you have to have the knowledge, experience, and the patience that when Zach or Jeff say, listen, we gotta get out, even if it's before prime time or it's right at prime time, we gotta get out because all you're gonna do is educate those animals. You know, if they smell that scent, it is game over. We're tacking down this camp. We're gonna head on the boat or load everything up, head down the river to the next spot that looks like a good place to be hunting at. Um, and where we can set up camp across the river from it, just like we did here, but hopefully further down the river, we'll see more bears. We saw four bears while we were here in camp, but when we were out there, the wind just kept messing us up. And two of the nights we had to come back early last night, we sat and didn't see a bear. So time to move on up the, down the river and um, see what's at the next spot, what's waiting for us there. We gave it three days. The wind hasn't been a friend over here. Zach and Jeff said, time to go down river. And we're going to where, I believe, are we going to where the, the Choice, where Vicky shot her bear last two years ago? Yes, sir. We're going to Vicky's spot, called the Choice. How many of us, have, isn't that cool to have a spot named after you? Well, this morning it rained all pretty much early morning on and it finally stopped uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of fishing and we got to monitor the wind and see what happens we're gonna go catch some reds one of the super cool things about this and that is Vicki and I don't have a lot of time to go fishing you know we're always we're always doing everything else you just put your you got your waders on and you go and you hit these little eddies and these pools and that awesome rule. I mean, you could catch coho, you could catch, I, I mean, you could catch everything. And it was just, it was awesome. So my first cast, and I got one. <laughs> it's crazy. 
coho. There's world-class fishing on this river. This is why we come to Wade Renfro's. You have a chance at really, really some of the bigger rainbows in our continent. Ralph actually hooked one of the bigger rainbows I've seen caught this year. It was a solid 29 inch fish, probably eight pounds, just a hog of a rainbow. I'm putting a beam in through a brown bear this trip. Okay. I've waited my whole life. It's gonna happen this trip. Zach, is it gonna happen this trip? Yes, man. <sighs> gonna go crazy. Gonna go crazy. I'm gonna break, I'm gonna break his chest bone with a hug. We decided to move downriver. Came downriver to another point that Zach has had tremendous success through the years. Zach, every year he's hunted this, they're coming out of that head right there. But this slough is loaded, loaded with salmon. It's got all kinds of fish in it. Reds, coho, char, grayling, rainbows. It's just a honey hole for brown bear. This is so cool, guys. You've got to understand. We are in the middle of brown bear country, and we're in the smack dab middle of it, baby. They think something might be working up down that creek. You know, we got in there, and Vicky goes, "There's a bear," and I mean, here comes this little cub, a little cub. And who knows what happened to the mother? Maybe, you know, maybe another bear killed her. It, who knows? But this cub is on its own. And you could see it's healthy, but the true reality of it is, is very, very high percentage that this little guy's not gonna make it. We witnessed him pulling dead fish. He's not quite big enough to catch a live fish. He's not fast enough. He doesn't know. That's, that's up to mama to teach him that stuff. The food's gonna dry up, have nowhere to go, and he's gonna die, or a bigger boar, another bear's gonna just kill him and feed on him. Uh, and I mean, it's sad. It really is sad to watch that. And, and we saw that little guy almost every day we sat in that slough. It looked like a two-year-old bear. Two-year-old cub. I sure hope he's not alone, because if he's alone, he ain't, like Zach said, he ain't gonna make it. Every year before hunting season, we take a little vacation just to unwind before the season starts. We were camped out on a lake. We were there for a week. When they get a little break, Wade normally says, okay, what do you want to do? And Jeff said, you know, I'd like to just go for a couple days up in the mountains. And all of a sudden, Wade, you know, guys are flying in to pick Jeff up and Bacardi. And Bacardi takes off and off. And I mean, gone. So I spent an extra six days searching for my dog, high and low. He was literally, he, I mean, he was torn apart. He was, he was broken hearted. I mean, this has been, been his, his buddy and pal for, you know, 12 years you lose your best friend. That, that's a hard thing to take. I've never had such a loss in my whole life. I've had a lot of people die and been through a lot of hard things, but never have I had such sadness in my life. We were in camp. Now, mind you, this is a month later. Wade gets, they get a call that, that some other camp found Bacardi. And Wade calls us up and he says, Ralph, just go outside the tent. So I went outside the tent and he said, listen, don't tell nobody. He said, but Jeff's dog showed up and we're gonna go pick it up. And we'd like to bring it into camp. Out on this excursion, Wade showed up and out of the blue, my dog jumped out of the airplane. And I've never been more happier in my life. When Wade pulls Bacardi out of the plane and Jeff saw Bacardi, we all had tears in our eyes. <laughs> this was a surprise, bud. Goodbye, Dillingham? Yeah. No yeah. way. Showed up by Dillingham. Lodge owner, founder, called us. Are you kidding Yeah, me? we went over and got her. She made it 60 or 80 miles. Now, mind you, this dog lost a ton of weight. It looked, he's real, you know, real skinny, but <laughs> Jeff had his buddy back. She traveled over the entire Kilbuck mountain range and was picked up near Dillingham. How many rivers and streams it had across but it made it home. Now, if that's not a heartwarming story, I don't know what is. Okay, Wade made a special trip out here to surprise me with my dog, and that just goes to show how cool Mr. Renfro is. Now, the surprise in all this is my whole hunting party knew that Bacardi was rescued. That made me not mad at all. I'm so glad that they surprised me, because it was, it was very emotional. 
And if they would have told me during the hunting, I would have been able to not focus on my job and I would have just wanted to get back to my dog. That was the happiest I've been in my entire life, hands down. I've never been so surprised and I'll never, ever forget it. We were back in a slough that I, I generally have very good success with and once again we were seeing bears in there. That's the bear we're the wind was right, we pulled around the slough and kind of went in a little bit deeper. Um, when we did that, we found another place that was holding fish, a little, a little back slough off of the main uh, one that we were hunting. It was perfect, perfect conditions for a bow hunt for Ralph. Hunting with my best friend Zach is an educational experience. Not only is he my best friend, but he teaches me the ways to hunt brown bears safely and efficiently. We're gonna hunker down like we did last night, and it's a waiting game. The bears aren't gonna be there because the food's there. It's just a matter of being there at the right time, at the right place, and a bear in your face. So we pulled in there, and once we did, the, the wind started swirling. So we hadn't sat down for five minutes, I don't think. All right, it doesn't seem like the bears are coming here, so we're gonna go to them. We're gonna see if they're feeding somewhere else. If not, we know this is the best spot to sit in. We're gonna get a little aggressive. We came all the way down into this slough even deeper, found a big track. We're just gonna hunker down here for a little bit and see what happens. We were all sitting around figuring what else, you know, what was our next move for the evening hunt. And Jeff seen a bear. Jeff goes bear. And I mean, this bear pops out from nowhere. This bear was probably at one time, definitely less than 20 yards from us. I just saw him through the brush. He was looking at us and then he ran. And he mm -hmm. ran up in there. There he is, there he is. He's still he's here. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. I popped my teeth out of him a little bit. Uh, trying to challenge him, trying to, to, to make him think that we were bears to come investigate. Sure enough, he crossed the slough and was headed right to investigate us. You're so dependent on the weather, and I should say weather and the wind. A lot of these sloughs, you can only hunt them with one certain wind. And if, if your wind's blowing into where you think they're coming from, man, it's over. It's a gamble that we as hunters are willing to take because you could be literally at point blank range on a big old brown bear, and that's a rush. You never know what can happen. No, you don't know if you're gonna see brown bears, if you're gonna go fishing, what's gonna happen, do you get into a log jam? I mean, there's so much going on that you don't know, and that's, I think, why we love going up to Renfro's. What Wade did with Jeff? Yeah, it was amazing. That I mean, that just shows you the character of individuals. I mean, do you realize what it cost Wade to go get the dog, to do all those things? And I mean... It was pretty cool. It really was. Hey, if wow. you happen to see the Lucky Logo, which was a mare step... in ground blinds. You need to log on to thechoicetv.com, click on the Lucky Logo button, fill out some information, and someone's going to win some great stuff from a mare step as well as some other manufacturers. Next week, guess what? It's part two of our Alaskan Renfro adventure. And I'm telling you, I'm getting closer and closer to draw on that Hoyt. We'll see what happens. I'm a big Alaskan brown bear. Thanks for making your choice the choice. See you next week.